Today, most NASCAR fans will look at Derek Cope as just another one-hit wonder, but it wasn't always like that. There was a time where fans were expecting him to take the next step from a once lovable underdog into a solid driver. Unfortunately, not all expectations come to fruition, and this would lead to one of Derek Cope's worst seasons in his entire Cup Series career. So let's get into it. The season prior in 1990, Derek Cope was entering his second full-time season driving for Bob Wickham. To start off the season, on the final lap of the Daytona 500, Dale Sr. would blow his tire entering turn three, and his loss would become Cope and Wickham's game. They would pull off the unthinkable, scoring an upset victory in the Daytona 500, that being Derek Cope's first career Winston Cup Series victory. This was also Wickham's first victory as a car owner in the Cup Series, and the question remained after the race. Can this team have sustained success? They were able to back it up. Somewhat. They would score another victory in the 11th race of the season at Dover, and their 1990 stats are this. Two wins, two top fives, six top tens, with an average finish of 19.1, and finished 18th in the standings. For an underdog team, these are solid numbers, and it provided some building blocks heading into the next season. Or so we thought. Turns out that this 1990 Winston Cup Series season was the peak for both Derek Cope and Bob Wickham's careers. If 1990 was the peak, 1991 was the cliff they fell off of. The two parties failed to rekindle the magic that took place in 1990, and the following season in 1991, they produced a season that they would rather forget. There we see Rusty Wallace really seemed to be all on his own when he set to uh... We'll have to have a look at that again, I'm afraid. The radio is saying he feels he was tagged by Kyle Petty. We, we need to look again. We need to go back a little bit further than that to see what happened. What happened, Cope? He did Derek the Cope's car. Spun up onto the Strickland car. And then that Harry Gant had nowhere to go, and he ran into Strickland. We're looking over going in three, coming off four turn here. When they pick it up, Bobby Holmes is already on the outside. That's Joe Rutman spinning around. He backs into Derek Cope. That pull the rear end housing almost out from under Cope's car. He pulled away, but... Uh, he's not going to be able to keep running either. Derek Culp saying, my kingdom for another foot and a half of daylight, and he just flat ran out of it. And that pretty much shatters his hopes of having a good run here. He's back on pit road. A big crash on the front stretch. Derek Culp makes hard impact with the wall coming off of corner number four, and so did Bill Elliott make some hard contact with something. I think it was the back of Culp's car. Anyway, Cope's car is on the inside down by pit wall just past the start finish line. And the guy who won the Daytona 500 a year ago and had to take a provisional to get into this race has suffered severe damage on the right side of the race car. Wow, there is some heavy damage. Here it is again. Cope's got on the outside. Here he comes off turn four, and look, something happened to the right front of the car, and he just goes straight in the wall and right down in the side of Bill Elliott's car. Yeah, he hit Bill Elliott's car hard on the right front. Let's go to John Kernan. Derek has radioed into his crew chief, Buddy Perrin, who's told him that the problem was the throttle hung open on him, hung wide open, and that uh, was part of the problem coming out of the turn, or in the turn, as the throttle hung on him. Well, he made hard contact on the right side of the car, with a fourth turn wall and then heavy contact with Bill Elliott as he slid across the racetrack. He is out of the race car and walking toward the ambulance, but the day is done for Derek Cope. Those who failed to qualify, Derek Cope, Bobby Hamilton, Jimmy Means, Dave Marcus, and J.D. McDuffie. However, there was no second round qualifying here yesterday, and so those guys actually didn't get a chance to get into the starting lineup. Darrell Waltrip as they drop down the back stretch. Tremendous side-by-side -side racing and a crash. Mark Martin's car lifts off the ground but does not go over. But this crash is going to involve several cars. You see Hud Strickland in the mud. And there's it was bound to happen. Look at this. Looks like a parking lot. Looks like a junkyard back in the back stretch. I see Derek, he's already taken the, you can see his hands moving inside the car, he's already taken his window net down, so I think Derek's probably okay. Top of your screen, there he goes. He's already sideways, he backs up into the outside wall, and that's just, uh, as we've talked earlier, the bank, the bank just sends him back down into the inside wall. Oh, and here comes traffic. Tommy Ellis, Rick Mast. See, as Buddy said earlier, he let off the brake to go ahead and get out of the way, so that, that kept Tommy Ellis. Rick Mast and Bobby Hillen for being in trouble. We have another view of it, buddy. 
Oh, boy. I tell you, he clouded the outside wall there. You can't hit my tartar net on the outside. Look at that car. The damage on that thing is unbelievable. But he was smart enough to get out of the way and let the brake off. And Derek Cope has crashed. He's taken that uh, Chevrolet into the tire barrier, and it is going to bring out a full-course caution. I think it may have been a little premature because, as you can see, Derek has that car going. But in any case, the NASCAR officials have decided to throw the overall yellow and Derek Cope heads for the pits. That was at turn number 10, just before the pit entrance. Here's Derek Cope on the pit road. Mike Joy is with him. And it's engine trouble, Ken. They're going to lift off these cowl plates that sit behind the hood and try to get access to both the carburetor and the distributor. The engine just shut off. Another crash involving several cars. Ooh. Big time crash over that time. Derry Cope and Jimmy Spencer are two of those involved, and there are others. And we see some contact between Morgan Shepard. He's uh -huh. on the inside, and the Derrick Cope, pure later Shirley, as I mentioned a moment ago. Now, I thought this red car, that Morgan, I thought that fellow who hit, they hit nose to nose, but he stops, and then Spencer comes Ooh. along, and look how he wow. jacks that rear end up off the ground. He hit him hard. Appears to be losing ground to number six and the ten car of more of Derry Cope is slow on the back coming into the pit. Yeah, so I thought more the car number ten of Derry Cope is going very slow on the back straight. You're looking at uh, Derry Cope, driver of car number ten, the pure later car. Derry, great success here last year, not so much this year. Can you tell us what happened? Well, it was a short day for us. Uh, you know, I was bringing the pure later Chevrolet off turn two, and you know we were kind of not really up to speed yet, and a couple cars got together up front and. Hutt moved down, and I moved down, and then Lake got in the wall, and we got into Lake, and just one of those deals, you know, kind of, uh, you know, wait and see what you can get through a hole, and we didn't do it. Well, unfortunately, we've seen this four or five times this year on restarts. Uh, what, what's going on out there? What's in the driver's mind? Well, you know, you got the you know, slower cars on the bottom side, and the fast cars trying to get by on the outside, and this is a slippery racetrack on the outside, so guys are trying to get to the bottom side, and, you know, it's just kind of a push-and-shove match, and it's sometimes, uh, you know, the guys uh, get together. Uh, just kind of everybody trying to get to the same space at the same time. Yeah, and you can't do that. There's the 10 car, Derek Cope in bad trouble. Car number three, Earnhardt dodging down to the inside. And the five car of Ricky Rudd is in big trouble. Here is car number five coming around, and just you can see Brett Bodine applying the brakes, trying to get woed. And as number five was able to get it under control, he was hit from the rear by Derek Cope. Ken, the wreck was in front of that. There was a couple of cars up in the wall ahead of that, and there were... We got another shot. Maybe we pick it up. Here's uh, this Dave is Marcus. Dave Marcus. He's already been into the wall. But see the debris in front of him. There's other cars. There's the 15. Is that Morgan Shepard up there? It looked like Morgan Shepard. He got into the wall in front of uh, Dave Marcus. So this other wrecks were just people standing on the brakes trying to stay out of trouble. Derek Cope in the pure later Chevrolet is blown an engine or whatever and is coasting on the apron of the racetrack towards the pits. And there's a driver that you can bet kind of is glad the 1991 is over. It hasn't been nearly as successful a season as Derek had hoped. He looks forward to better things in 1992. His 1991 stats are this. Zero wins, one top five, two top tens, and an average finish of 24.5, and finished 28th in the standings along with 14 DNFs. Cope would race for Bob Wickham for one more season in 1992, where he didn't do much better. After 1992, Bob Wickham's team would shut down and Derek Cope would become just another journeyman driver. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Lives Matter. Catch you next time.